Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be sharing with you some of our favorite holiday desserts. We are starting off this video with a vegan gingerbread loaf. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have definitely seen me testing this. I think I made it like five or six times now. It has been a journey, but it is finally perfect, and we're gonna show you how to make it. First up to my bowl, I'm prepping my wet ingredients, and you wanna do this first because it has flax seeds in it, and you're not prepping the flax eggs separately, so you want it to sit while you prep your dry. So in my bowl, I'm adding in some sunflower oil. We like this oil because it is a neutral oil. Also adding some molasses make sure it is unsulfured and not blackstrap then we have some boiling hot water flaxseed meal like I mentioned vanilla extract and some apple cider vinegar I'm gonna whisk that together until it is nice and smooth and I'm just gonna set this aside and prep the dry for my dry ingredients I'm adding in some all-purpose flour some brown sugar baking powder a bunch of spices here we have garlic garlic ginger, cinnamon, allspice, and some cloves, and then some baking soda and salt. I'm just gonna mix that together until it's nice and uniform. All right, I added my wet ingredients to my dry. Just gonna mix that until it is uniform. Then I'm transferring it to a greased bread pan. You can also line it with parchment if you'd like as well. Then I'm gonna pop this into the oven and bake it until it's golden and a toothpick runs clean. We have our bread here, it is cooling. In the meantime, I'm going to prep a cream cheese icing. If you made our pumpkin bread, it's the exact same recipe and it pairs really well with the gingerbread. So first in my bowl, I'm adding some powdered sugar, some softened vegan butter, some vanilla, extract, cream cheese, vegan of course, and some lemon juice. I'm gonna mix that together with a fork and then add a little bit of almond milk. A little goes a long way here, so be very careful, add it slowly. If it does loosen up, you'll have more of like a glaze, but it's still delicious on the bread. And to make it nice and smooth, I'm going in with an immersion blender. I really like to use this because without it, it is a little clumpy. You can still make it without this, but this is great for presentation purposes. All right, all that's left to do is basically decorate our gingerbread loaf. So first First up, I'm gonna drizzle it with our beautiful cream cheese icing. And then I actually made some homemade candy pecans. You can also buy some at the store. If you wanna make it at home, we have a recipe link down below. I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top and you've got yourself some beautiful, fluffy, vegan gingerbread. So this is great for dessert or if you wanna make it less sweet, don't put the um, candy pecans or the icing on top. You can just have mm. the bread alone. It's still sweet on its own. It's great for breakfast, great with coffee or matcha. I was gonna say great with coffee. Really good with tea. Mm. I like to just spread cream cheese on it. And oh, like if I wasn't gonna put the frosting, just like enjoy it with cream cheese on top. That's how Chris mm. was eating it while really we were good. testing it. So good, perfectly spiced. I love it. We have a lot of different loaves on our blog now. We're just a loaf blog. Gingerbread, pumpkin, Banana. Banana. We have um, egg bread. Yeah, fluffy vegan egg bread. We have a gluten free lemon poppy seed. We got a lot going on. We should do more. Let us know if you want any other flavors, what flavors you want. Let me I'm, know if you would loaf some more recipes. I think I want to do a chocolate bread. Like a. Mm. Or like a cinnamon swirl bread. Mm. Be really, I was thinking like a chocolate peppermint. Or like peanut butter bread. That's more for like Christmas though, chocolate peppermint or mm -hmm. peanut butter. So maybe next year, I don't know. Unless you Hot guys just want bread. it. chocolate Ooh. Oh, Sorry, wow. we're going off topic here. If you want this recipe or any recipe in this video, like we mentioned before, it is on our blog, link down below with some pretty photos. It is printable and ooh, we did a step-by-step -step as well as you can see every single step from the recipe. If you do enjoy our recipes, we would really appreciate if you left a review on our blog, left a star review, left a comment. It really helps us on Google. We are trying to be better about our blog this year. It is the hub of Seeds of Vegan. It has, I think we have like 500 recipes now or something crazy. Something like that. Yeah, so check it out if you haven't already. That's where all of our recipes live. And uh, let's get into the next dessert. The next recipe we're sharing today is for Pizzelles, which is an Italian waffle cookie. This is actually a family recipe of mine that I was able to veganize, and I'm really excited to share it today. To start in a large bowl, I'm gonna be adding some liquid egg substitute. I'm using just egg here, but any liquid egg substitute would do the trick. And I'm also gonna add in some sugar and then beat that together with a hand mixer. Next, I'm gonna add in some melted vegan butter along with some vanilla extract. Now we're gonna sift in our dry ingredients. I have some all-purpose flour here. 
along with some baking powder. And the reason we're sifting in the dry ingredients is because we want it to be really fine. We don't want any clumps when we mix it together. So this really helps do that. Plus a pinch of salt. Now I'm just gonna mix everything together with a hand mixture until we have a nice and thick, smooth batter. Now that our batter's finished, we're gonna add in a little bit more flavor. Uh, my family likes to add in star anise or star anise. I've seen other recipes add in lemon, but for this today, we're just gonna add in star anise. So I'm gonna crush this up with a rock. <laughs> Jasmine's mom showed us this. She calls it a buck buck. And then we're just gonna add it in. <laughs> Now we're just gonna mix all this through till it's combined. If you're not familiar with the flavor of star anise, it's kind of licorice-y, so if that's not your thing, you can also just leave it out. It's totally optional, but definitely recommended. It helps add a more unique flavor, I guess. Really good. Really, really good. Really, really, Oof. really good. All that we have left to do now is prepare our pizzelle. So I'm gonna heat up my pizzelle press. If you're interested in getting a pizzelle press for yourself, uh, I'll link a few options down below. We just have a Cuisinart one. It's nothing fancy. My mom actually has a really nice old school cast iron one and you heat it on the stove. In terms of measurements for the dough, we have this. I think it's a little bit larger than a tablespoon, but you can also use a tablespoon. This just came with ours. So we're gonna just scoop the dough and we're gonna place it into the middle of each mold. These are, I think, one of the prettiest cookies or Christmas cookies that I've ever seen. And all we have left to do now, and this is also another optional step, is we're gonna dust these with powdered sugar. We made these last year and Chris didn't put together a recipe for the blog and... Now we got one. Yeah, a lot of people were asking for it and we finally got one out. This is very exciting. I also experimented with, so there's um, a method where you can roll them into like cannoli shells almost and fill them with cream, but I couldn't get the cream perfect. Maybe that'll come out next year. So basically these come out of the, wa like the waffle iron soft, so you can kind of mold them how you'd like. So I've seen them, people make bowls out of them. Mm. So you can get creative and have fun. How do you do the bowl? Like a muffin pan or like a cupcake? Yeah, like pan? a cupcake tin or even in like a regular bowl. It's oh. like, because basically as it cools, it's it. gonna harden and then it's gonna take whatever shape What do you put in, in the bowl? Put ice cream. Ooh, yeah. that sounds good. Anyways, let's give <laughs> these a taste test. Mm. That was perfect. That? That's absolutely perfect. Mm. Reminds me exactly of mm. what I remember pizzelles tasting like growing up, so. Really delicious, Spot I on. love it. It's perfectly buttery, perfectly crispy. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's perfect. I am uh, curious, I would love to try the lemon version of this. Me too. I'll call my mom and see if she really has uh, any recommendations oh. on. Well, no one's in these. No one's in. In our dog, in the dog's mouth, not our dog, our friend's dog. <laughs> Anyways, all right. On to the next recipe. On to the next recipe. The last and final recipe we're making for today's video is Suman Malakit, which is a steamed Filipino rice cake. It is great for dessert, but also great for breakfast. And what I love about this recipe is that the sweetness level is based on your personal preference. So you can make it sweeter or less sweet depending on how you want it. And another thing is I wanted to include it in this video because it is great for gifting. When you make Suman, you make a ton of it so you can give it to your friends and your family. It makes a great gift. And I don't know about you, but I love receiving edible gifts during the holidays. I feel like it's extra special. It's an extra, I don't know, layer of love from whoever's giving it to you and it's always a great gift. So suman is really easy to make but it does take quite a bit of time just because you need to soak your rice and also the steaming process a little long but it's really easy, I promise. So first up, we got some sweet rice. I just get this at my local Asian market, H Mart if you're in the Portland area and we're going to add some to a bowl, rinse it until the water runs clean. I like to rinse it maybe like three or four times, and then we're going to allow it to soak in some water overnight. Then we're going to drain it and set it aside, and in my wok, you can use any large saucepan of your choice. I would recommend using a non-stick because we're gonna be working with rice, so you don't want it to stick to the sides. I will link this down below if anyone's interested. I love this wok, and it is a great gift as well. So to my wok, I'm adding in some coconut milk, as well as sugar and some salt. 
And I'm going to mix that together until the sugar fully melts and everything is nice and uniform. Then I'm adding in my soaked rice as well as some ginger. And the ginger is totally optional, but I love adding it because, well, it's delicious. But another thing is that's how my grandma used to cook it and I want to stay true to how she did it, so ginger's going in. We're gonna mix that all together and then bring it to a boil. Then lower it to a simmer and just slowly cook the rice down until it is a kind of like a thick porridge, thick oatmeal texture. And you want to make sure you're just continuously mixing it. There is a saying in my family and it's, I have arms like Suman. Like, they shouldn't be saying this about themselves, but my mom, my titas, they say like their arms look big. And the reason why they say that is because when you're making suman, like you really gotta work your arm, your arm gets tired, and you're working your arm out, and uh, yeah, arms like suman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to explain it without sounding dumb. As you can see, it is a nice and thick texture. Now I'm just removing the ginger. And we're gonna set this aside while we prep our banana leaves. You wanna do this before you prep your banana leaves because you want it to cool down a bit. Not only does it continue to thicken, but also it's just easier to handle if you put this piping hot into the banana leaves. You're gonna feel it through the banana leaves and it's gonna be hot to handle and then it's gonna be hard to roll. So it's just easier to work with once it's cool. All right, I'm gonna cut my banana leaves into about 10 by 12 inch pieces. And it doesn't have to be super precise here. You can also buy these in rounds, which is easier because they're pre-cut, but you could do it with these two. So I'm gonna cut my sheets. Then we're just taking a clean towel and I'm just gonna wipe down the leaves, wipe off any excess liquid, also giving them a good clean. All right, on low heat, we're going to heat our banana leaves. This is kind of how you heat tortillas. If you've done that, you know how to do this. And you just wanna warm the whole leaf and you can actually see it turning like a different color. It becomes bright green. You wanna do this, it just makes it more malleable and it'll break less easily. If you use the banana leaves without doing this, you are prone to tears and you really don't want that to happen because then the rice will come through and then it'll go everywhere and it's just not fun. I'm also heating a small piece as well and we're doing this because we're going to rip this into strings and that's what we're going to use to tie up the suman later. And this was just a piece that was already pre-cut. Sometimes they are ripped, but you can also just rip your own if you don't have one. Now we are going to stuff our banana leaves and you'll see the banana leaves have a shiny side and a dull side. I fill it on the dull side so that the shiny side is on the outside, but it honestly doesn't matter if you um, accidentally put it on the other side. So I'm gonna scoop out some filling, pop it into the banana leaf. I pop it in maybe like two to three inches away from the bottom edge, and then what I'm gonna do is flatten it out. I just use my measuring cup that I use. I'm gonna fold up the edge and form the suman into a long log. You can make big suman, you can make skinny suman, make them whatever size you'd like. I just like to make sure that they're all uniform from the batch. And now we're just gonna roll it tightly. So we're going to roll this edge over, tuck it under with your fingers. And then once it's rolled, we're gonna fold up the edges like so. Then we're just going to roll it all the way to the end and set that aside. And you wanna do this very gently because you don't wanna rip your banana leaves. If it does rip in the area where the rice is, what you can do is just take a strip and kind of like tuck it in there, like repair it that way and leave that strip under the rice and roll it so that it doesn't burst out when you're rolling it. Next, we're going to wrap our suman and in order to do that, you need little pieces of banana leaf and it's really easy to do. Just take any extra banana leaves you have and you're just gonna rip off a piece and that becomes your string. So we're gonna stack two sumans together. You can also steam individual suman, but we like to do it in pairs. That's just how my family does it. I don't really know the significance behind that actually, so if you do, let me know in the comments below. And you're just gonna tie a double knot at each end. Make sure it is nice and tight, again, so that the suman doesn't pop open. All right, and the suman is ready to be steamed. So I'm just gonna continue doing this with the rest of the rice, and you should get six with the recipe that I have. I measured it out perfectly, but again, you can tie individual ones. If you have seven, if you end up having five, 
You can just tie up a lone suman. So we're gonna pop them in our steamer tray and we're gonna add enough water to where it starts to touch the sides of the suman. And we're just gonna steam this for about an hour until it is cooked through. And while the suman steams, we're going to be making this coconut caramel. I didn't realize that latik, which if you know what that is, well, I knew it was like the coconut curds. It was like this crumbly coconut thing you put on top of suman, you could put on top of different desserts. I thought that was latik, but apparently in the Visayan region of the Philippines, it is this coconut caramel sauce. And so apparently I made latik and I didn't realize. And this is really easy to make. So in a small pot, I added some coconut milk along with some brown sugar. You can also use granulated sugar if that's what you have and some salt. And we're just gonna cook that down for about 20 minutes or so until it becomes nice and thick. And I like to add a vanilla extract to mine at the end, but you totally don't have to do that. It's an optional ingredient. And what you're left with is this delicious coconut caramel sauce. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can make your suman depending on your sweetness preference. Also, if you're gonna make this coconut caramel sauce, you can make your suman less sweet because this is pretty sweet, so it will balance it out. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna be making this as well. All right, and once the suman is done, carefully remove it from the pot, unravel it, and reveal, I don't know, all its glory? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> And then we're gonna hit it with some of that coconut caramel sauce. Hit it, baby. Hit it, baby. And you're ready to eat. Oh, that's really good. I poked myself. It reminds so me of my days good. in Palawan. <laughs> Chris, when I was saying suman malikit, you thought that I was saying malikot. <laughs> it was just really funny if you know malikot, malikit. <laughs> Masakit ang. Masakitang. Ulo. Chris knows the gala. Masakitang chan. I dabble, okay? <laughs> you know. We were taking there. lessons and then our teacher ghosted us and we haven't heard no, from her. No, I yet. think she's just busy. They were free classes, so we can't <laughs> expect her to freaking. <laughs> really delicious. There's a bunch of variations of suman. I forgot to mention that. I actually really want to try the one with cassava. I've never made it before. I was supposed you to put make it in the rice. I think it either with the rice. No, I think it replaces the rice because mm. this is suman malakit. Malakit is the sweet rice. That's mm. why. That's the name. That's what it means. Oh. The banana leaf. If you don't have the banana leaf, you can technically make it without it. My mom was saying you can technically make it with parchment paper, but the banana leaf really adds a. Like herbal a flavor and aroma. Yeah, it's really delicious. It's kind of like a subtle tea flavor. That's like the only way I know how to describe it. And if you can get the banana leaves, I would really recommend you do because it will alter the flavor without it. It's still delicious without it, but the banana leaves just kind of rounds it all up and just makes rounds this. it up, baby. Is that, Is that rounds 4. It out. five? It's going to five, baby. <laughs> rounds it up. <laughs> 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 not, rounds it all out. Yeah. Is that up? <laughs> 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 all right. We, um, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully, we gave you some holiday dessert inspiration. We have um, a lot of desserts on the blog, and there was no way we could have made all of them on our YouTube channel. Um, for you in this video, but we will link some recipes down below and if you are making something else for the holidays We'd love to hear what you're going to make and maybe give us some ideas to try next year Also, this is our last video of the year. So thank you for sticking with us all year We had so much fun hanging out with everyone and we can't wait for 2022 We will be taking a short break in 2022 our first video is gonna be at the end of January we just need some time off to Honestly, just get some sleep and rest in. It has been a great year, but it's also been a very busy and tiring year. So we're gonna take a little time off for ourselves. If you don't follow us on Instagram, we'll be there posting on stories mm -hmm. and on our feed and stuff. So I guess yeah, we'll take you back from YouTube. There. Yeah. yeah, and we will definitely post an update when we will be back. And we actually have our video planned already, so it should be a good time. Um, yeah, like Chris said, thank you so much for all of your love and support this year. We are almost at 200,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane and so awesome that our community has grown so much in the past two years. 
And um, I think that's all I got to say. Enjoy the recipes, enjoy the suman, and see you soon. Peace. Bye. Thank you.